All right, so I was just getting on here today to show you guys I have learned a little bit of Python as a musician that has been in geez, trying to be dawless and actually just trying to make beats and things like that. I've always messed around with MIDI and knew that Python was popular, but this is the first time I've actually been able to get Python to work, and it's thanks to uh, AI as a teacher. So I kind of wanted to show you that Claude is pretty powerful. You could probably use ChatGPT in some more way, but um, just wanted to show you that you can actually create MIDI files with Claude um, without really even knowing how Python works very well. You could be a, pretty much an amateur, which I am. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we'll first start off, start off with, um, I ended up making a, just a folder on my desktop. It's called Python Songs. Um, just uh, for someone that doesn't know Python very well, um, making it one word is a little easier. If you make it two words and it has an extra slash and um, I'm not even that concerned about the name. So I just made it one word. It just makes it easier. So, um, so what I did to make this go a little bit quicker is I made a prompt already. So it's not super long or anything, but um, uh, I just figured I'd type it out ahead of time because nobody wants to see me uh, misspell things and type forever. So, um, so basically it's, you're just going to add a prompt to Claude and it's actually going to be able to make a Python script and actually uh, take that MIDI file and actually put it into Ableton or gosh, any device that'll take a MIDI file. And that, you know, if any of you have messed around with MIDI files, um, the Disting EX will actually take a MIDI file and compile all the channels. Um, I have an Akai Force that'll do the same thing. Um, so the thing that's nice about MIDI and kind of is nice to understand is that, you know, MIDI file type one is the type that actually has the multiple channels separated out and you can actually, you know, send it to different channels and send it to different pieces of hardware. Um, you can send the bass one place and you can send the chords the other place and the drums to a drum machine. Where if it's MIDI file type one or zero, you can actually, it's all kind of lumped together and it actually it's kind of hard to separate uh, in general. So um, it's nice that this is able to do that. You're actually just going to first call it, uh, call out and say that you want MIDI file type one. And this is kind of just a basic thing to get through this, but I just made it 16 bars long. Um, I like to have some error checking. It does a pretty good job at it. But sometimes if you're requesting a change as you build these out, you know, you'll ask for like longer chords or something and it'll push past the 16 bars. So not all the tracks will line up. So it just kind of cleans it up a little bit to make sure that it's uh, sitting at 16 bars. Um, I'm just asking it for to make 10 MIDI files. Uh, it's using the hours, minutes, seconds, and it's listing BPM in the name. That's kind of nice because if you regenerate, it won't just write over everything. So it actually will use the time as the way of designating uh, that it's a different file. Um, I just say that it's Ableton friendly. I'm not even sure. It seems like that helps. I don't know. But like, you know, I'm using it in Ableton most of the time just to kind of look at it and use it. So um so it just kind of helps for some of the error stuff. Um, and it's kind of just, I have it laid out this way, but you can lay it out however you want. I, you know, with the devices that I use, I like to have three channels of information and then the drum track. So uh, the first one could be chords for me. And, you know, this is basically to use two, 10 different chord progressions from hit songs. And the cool thing about this is you can just like, this is set at nineties dance, you know, but like you could put this at, you know, post punk or you could put it at, you know, uh, rock, you know, you can put it at anything and it actually go find songs and it'll show the progressions in this code, which is kind of cool. Cause you, you can ask it to include the song reference. So it'll actually tell you what songs the progressions coming from. Um, the baseline I just have here, it's just kind of basically make a couple variations to make it more interesting. 
Um, for this section, you can have it do whatever. You can have it play extra chords. You can have it play another bass line or whatever you want. I just have um, just making different appreciation basically with uh, the information from this, the chords that it's making. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then, of course, uh, the drum channel. You can have it do whatever you want. For this one, just keep it easy. Um, just doing the, you know, like a four on the floor kind of kick, and then the hi hats will do whatever it wants to do. Um, and that kind of gives it a little freedom to, you know, whatever the genre is that you're choosing, it'll kind of mess around with that. Um, and down here, I just kind of wrote, you know, some stuff to reiterate, reiterate so that it kind of knows really what I want to do. Um, you know, you it can it, it'll I'll have it recommend the script name. You know, you, you can name it whatever you want, but um, it's kind of nice when it just you know once you throw this prompt in there, it kind of does a lot of the things you want it to do. Um, this error checking for for the actual utility it's using for some reason. Sometimes when I run it, it puts an S on the end for some reason, and that doesn't really exist. So I'm just having it checked to make sure it. So it's like one less error you got to go through. Um, and at the end, I actually just have it saying which command. This, for me, being so foreign to uh, Python, I just have it actually saying, like, what commands I need to do to actually get it to run because I'm just so new to it. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's as simple as, like, basically just copying this whole thing and throwing it right into Claude, actually. And the nice thing is you can kind of watch it kind of build out what it's doing. Um, so it's pretty cool. So like you can say this was set to, uh, to nineties dance right now. And this is kind of what I wrote. Uh, but you can see it's actually like going to get, you know, some Daft Punk stuff, um, Alice DJ, like, you know, classic nineties stuff and the progressions that go with it, which is kind of cool. And you can set all the stuff like the BPM and tell it very specific BPMs. Um, you know, it does the bass, it does the drums, you know, and it, it kind of changes every time based on the genre that you're using. Um, so, you know, this is the part where it's, you know, you're, you're dealing with Python. If you're new to it, you know, I was pretty much new to it until I started digging into this and realizing that, you know, that has such potential of like actually like teaching me as I go. But it's as simple as you just copy this and then what you'll need to do is you'll have to download Python ahead of time, which you know, for most computers, it's pretty straightforward. You can find that out. It's really easy just to d download it. Um, but really what you're going to end up doing is, you know, with the uh, text editor that you have, I mean, this is just text edit um, that comes with the Mac. So all I would do is create a new file and then I just paste it in there. And then um, I forget what it actually said here. It says to call it dance90s.py. Uh, it's a Python file, py. So, you know, so basically I um, put that in here. And now I just save it. And just remember where you saved it. So I'm going to put this in my, you know, Python songs folder. So, um, so dance90s.py. And we'll double check that that's there and it's right there, which is cool. So you have that file and that's what's going to run in Python. Um, so the th thing you have to do next is actually open up a terminal and that's where this actually runs. Um, so a terminal is in Mac too. So you just pull that open. And so with this, I keep on, there's a zillion windows, but it's kind of telling you what to do here, just based on what I like to look at it this way. And it, it might not even work then, but I need to find the path to get to the the file that I'm actually using. So the the only tricky part about that, you know, you basically have to look at your file. I, there's probably an easier way to do this, but um, I just get the info right click it and then right here you right click this and then copy path name and then you will actually go down to your terminal close that out go to your terminal write cd change directory and then here hit that and now you're in that area so you know that that file is in there 
Um, so then you just got to kind of follow these. I'm sure you could do these as one big command, but um, you just have to be mindful. For Sometimes you're writing code and somebody could, that deals with it more often, but um, Python 3 is what I'm using. And sometimes it just uses Python and sometimes it doesn't work and I need to learn more about that. But um, you just copy these commands. This is basically going to put this into a virtual environment. So we're going to activate it. And this is basically just going to run in a virtual space. And I don't know, <laughs> I couldn't tell you why, but it just seems to work better for me. Um, and then I'm going to install the utility that goes with this that kind of does all the work. Um, and then we'll do that, install that. And then we're going to run this cool file. And it'll be cheesy music, but it's it'll make a MIDI file, which is kind of cool. So, um, so I want to go to terminal again. And in the error, nice. Well, this is what I was hoping, actually. So this I, I kind of wanted to show something going wrong, which is actually a good thing. So, so I just want to show you how easy this is. I don't know anything about Python, really. Um, it's coming with an error. I'm not even going to read that. And, be ignorant or whatever, but I'm not even going to write anything about trying to fix it. And it's just going to go ahead and fix it for me. So, okay. So then you just copy this again. You're going to actually put this in here. And once you get this all in the right places, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot easier when you have a template made, but this is the very first time we're making this template. So, um, so you take everything that you just made again, and then save it and then we'll give it another try and see what happens you can just hit up on the keyboard and then hit enter and you know sometimes it'll tell you that it ran sometimes it doesn't but if it does that it means it ran so let's go look at our folder and there you go we have dance 90s so it has a bunch of midi files so this is um basically the time and the bpm of the track and it made a folder for it so we're going to go over to our trusty Ableton and we're going to go ahead and bring this over. Er, sorry. We're going to drag this over and we'll give it a play here. Let's go, we'll see what this sounds like. <laughs> All right. So weird but you know like we can you know you can always modify it but i guess the whole point of it and this is all stock instruments right so i just want to do something really basic but i just kind of wanted to show that it's really not that hard to make like a midi file and then you can get really into detail about what you're doing you know and the nice thing about you know doing these you can have it make multiple generations so like these will all be kind of the same but slightly different kind of cool so you know you can at least minimally get some kind of baseline out of it if you want um so that's kind of cool so like you know you could just do this over and over again you can modify it and then i'm gonna go ahead and run it again and you just get that many more files you know and they're just slightly different from each other because you had all those different chord progressions in there um tell they're generally the same but the more you ask it to do different genres and things it'll um let's do let, let's do something different actually so so that just kind of shows you that you an instantaneous and it's making these different tracks where which i really like because i'll use this in the um expert sleepers like disting and then you can send that information out to multiple devices or my multiple vcos so that's really cool. If you want to be truly, you know, um, dollless, you can just get, you know, like an EX or NT or whatever and just run that and then you can run these files and then you can focus more on your, the fun knob turning and just enjoying the experience more than just focusing on making that. Um, depends on your preference and stuff, but you could use these for anything really. And then, you know, you can make these as complex as you want. These can be, this is only 16 bars, but you can ask it to be as many bars as you want. You, there's like no limit on what you're going to do. Um, the thing that I did want to just do really quick is 
since we have this, let's go ahead and send a new, let's just make a brand new one. So let's do, um, let's do disk. Let's see what, let's see what even says disco. I don't even know what disco punk is, but let's try it, you know. Um, so you'll actually, I'm actually just going to grab all this and throw this into here and just make a brand new one. So let's see what it does here. Disco Punk, let's see what songs it comes up with. Okay, uh, Clash, Blondie. Okay, I, I could I could dig this. I didn't know what that was, but um, so yeah, so it's making a bunch of different songs and it'll kind of show you the drums will change, the bass will change based on what you're trying to do. You know, if you're making rock music, it's gonna make rock bass. You know, this is basic punk pattern you know, disco walking bass, you know, so you don't really know what you're getting into sometimes, but, um, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and make a new file. So I'm making a new text file, throw that in there. And then I will save that. Actually, what do we, what do we call that? Disc punk. I'm just going to go ahead and call it that. I mean, you don't have to call it that, but that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Um, disk. Punk. Boom. Probably want to go check to make sure it's there. That is there. So the only thing you have to do different now is actually in here is change this to disk punk. Uh, and it ran. So, um, so kind of once you get one template down, you know, you can kind of and ask it to do different things too. Let's just see what these sound like. They're not going to be amazing either, but like just the concept is pretty cool to me. I think. So you can hear it's just making kind of a different bass line. Tracks a little different, the chords are different, drums are definitely different. So you can kind of just play around with it. It's really cool. I, I know there's a lot of things out there generating music now, but this is totally free. And I think it's just kind of a fun, creative way. You can kind of go down a rabbit hole with this. Like I'm trying to make cool ones. This is just the most basic one. I'm trying to make the most basic one I can right here. But, but each time you do this, it's going to change it based on the genre. You can ask it to make it a certain type of band, you know, and you'll have a file. You can have it make it choruses. You can have it make just verse, chorus, verse type stuff. You can do whatever you want. So I just figured I'd show that to you and uh, hopefully you have fun with it. I've just kind of been messing with it. It's nice to make really simple files when you just want to have something repetitive on in the background, especially when I'm doing modular synth stuff. Sometimes I just want really something simple playing in the background. And it's more me about experiencing it than actually focusing on the melodies and stuff. And you just want to mess with different types of modules. So um, I really do enjoy that part of it. So hopefully you enjoyed this. And if you have any questions or comments, just let me know. Um, I could probably post some of the stuff if, if anybody's curious. So if somebody wants to just make these files just to look at them, um, I'd be more than willing to post those if somebody thinks they're cool. So, all right, well, enjoy yourself.